Hello. Before we start the main video, I wanted to talk to you uh, about a couple of things before we get started. The first one is the Mercedes Me app. Now, I thought it was fitting to do this before the video because the Mercedes Me app helps you track your car, see how much fuel you've got, uh, lock and unlock your doors before you set off. And this in here being the A250e, which is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, you can also preheat or pre-cool your car. The second part is that the video has already been shot, it's already been edited, and it's already about to go live. But the reason why it kind of took a different turn and the reason why I've decided to call it expectation versus reality is that it didn't go to plan. We had one idea of what the message that we wanted to communicate, the video that we wanted to do, but as we were doing it, real life happened and it just took a different turn. So um, stick around to the end and enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the AMG Lounge. I'm G and this may look like an ordinary A-Class, but in fact, it's the first plug-in hybrid electric variant. Now, if the success of the normal combustion engine A-Class is anything to go by, then this thing will lead the charge in the compact car segment. Pun intended. All right, I think that's started. So, we've got 100% charge. Well, 99% and we've got a range of 232 miles worth of petrol in the car as well and this real world review will be exactly that I'm not going to try and do excessive coasting or try and make the charge last longer than under normal circumstances so this will be a normal drive if I need to have the aircon on I will uh, but I am going to just drive an electric just to see if we can get all the way to Richmond and back here by just using electricity. Obviously the charge won't be enough to do a round trip, but we'll use some apps to help us find some charge points and just see how easy it is because it's the first time I'm gonna try and use charge a plug-in hybrid vehicle. So let's go. As you would expect, it is super quiet. And of course being so quiet, you actually end up hearing other things you wouldn't normally like just to mechanical bits working around the car. Hmm. On the Mercedes Me app, funnily enough, it can't search for charge points, so we're gonna be using the BP Charge Master. What Mercedes Me app does help you with though, it, it can kind of root out exactly how far you can get with the current charge state on your car. I'll show here. There you go, so you can see a blueprint around the map and shows you how far we can get with the current amount of charge in the car. Hybrid technology is of course nothing new. However, what is new is that it being available in such a compact size and have the three-pointed star. The A-Class has almost become the flagship car at Mercedes. It of course debuted the MBUX technology, which made a lot of sense, as it's the sort of technology the A-Class customer would buy into. So you could say the A-Class put the A in AI. The A in innovation, A in advanced. Anyway, now that we're driving in fully electric, there's of course no need for the gearbox, but this one does have an automatic gearbox, so it means that we have the flappy paddle paddles. But these paddle shifts still serve a purpose. So you can be driving around in normal drive. However, when you press gear up, what it does, it puts a little plus sign uh, next to the D, which basically means that you've got minimal resistance. So if I take my foot off the accelerator, the car almost feels like as if it's just free flowing, equivalent to putting it in neutral in an automatic or a manual car. However, when you press the minus sign, Again, you're met with a little minus sign next to the D, and now it's put a little bit of a resistance. So when I take my foot off the accelerator, you almost feel the car braking. And what that does is it just puts energy back into the battery. If you press minus again, and it adds a second minus next to the D, and now the resistance is further 
increased. Again, it's putting the energy back into the battery. At the same time, you can maximize coasting as well. Just before we set off, I reset the trip computer and the electric charge said that I was good for 39 miles. And so far we've done six and it's reduced it to 26. So let's see how many miles we can get in real world driving conditions. So as you can see at this point, everything was dandy. The car hadn't put a foot wrong. This has become a little interesting now. I've got 25 miles until I reach my destination and I've got 25 mile range left in the battery. So by the time I get there, theoretically speaking, I shouldn't need to use the combustion engine. So my range, which read 232 miles when I set off, still reads 232 miles and it should still read 232 miles by the time I get there. In 2019, the A-Class was the most Googled car. Technology took to the A-Class like a duck to water. So it's no surprise that we've seen the introduction of hybrid technology in what was already a technologically advanced car. You've got MBUX, you've got various different driving aids, and the connectivity options gave the A-Class an edge over its competitors. Technology like radar recuperation, which is incredibly smart. So as I mentioned earlier with the gear shifts, you can increase or decrease resistance depending on how you want to drive. But what it does automatically and as standard, it will read the car in front. And if you take your foot off the accelerator, it will try and maximize resistance by gauging the distance between you and the car in front. So if the car in front is slowing down when you're approaching, say, a roundabout, the resistance in your car will increase to slow you down and put maximum juice back into the battery. Clever stuff. And that's all standard. Good value for money. What is this hybrid all about? Well, it's almost like a halfway house between the combustion engine that we've had for decades that we all love and that we're all used to and what is slowly becoming the new norm, electric vehicles, or as Mercedes-Benz likes to call EQ. A step in the right direction, if you will, towards zero carbon. I like to call it the transitional car for people that are not quite ready to take the leap to go in fully electric or feel they can't because of where they live or the amount of miles they need to do or just suffer a real bad case of range anxiety but I'll get to more on that later just to let you guys know as well this particular vehicle is a demonstrator from Virtue Mercedes-Benz of Slough so if you do want to book a test drive or just come down and have a look at it I'll leave the phone number down below in the description box also What's the layout of this A-Class Hybrid? I'm glad you asked. So it's powered by the same 1.3 4-pot petrol engine that you find in the A200, giving you a generous 160 brake horsepower. Coupled with that is the EQ battery, which adds a further 102 horsepower, giving you a total of 262 brake horsepower. But you can't use all that power combined must be honest you either use the battery or the engine the onboard battery is a 15.6 kilowatt hour battery and is designed to give you up to 49 mile range at the moment I'm probably gonna get more like 35 36 um, but I, I do have my aircon on uh, sat naps working and as I said I haven't driven it particularly frugally I'm just giving you real world conditions. At 102 horsepower in the battery can drive this car up to 87 miles an hour on pure electric alone. Now the advantage of having a smaller battery on board means that you can charge it faster. From a wall box from 10% to 100% it can charge it in two to three hours. From a normal house socket where you plug your kettle into or your toaster it's about five and a half hours. Now this is pretty much the entry level car. In terms of money saving this is probably going to be the one to go for. It's the cheapest one out the range and uh, you still get some comfort, you've still got air conditioning, you still get sat nav, the radar recuperation is standard, heated seats, um, electric windows, reversing camera, no sensors but when you do reverse in this thing it still makes a noise outside uh, for pedestrians to hear you reversing and there is a speaker on the outside so people outside can hear you coming 
pretty different to the A45S that we saw a couple of weeks ago, isn't it? Well, you're not really going to be watching this for the same reasons. If you're a business car user, you will be very happy to hear that the benefit in kind tax is only 6% on one of these, with 100% capital allowance in the first year. Whatever that means. Not to mention, one of the greatest perks about this if you are planning on driving one of these in London is that it's exempt from the congestion charge. Another update, 24 miles into our journey, 46 minutes driven, average speed of 32 mile an hour, and I still have 13 mile range. So it looks like I'm heading towards a 37-ish mile trip, just on electric. Fuel, still reading 232. You really can't tell that you're in a plug-in hybrid A-Class over the normal A-Class. You do kind of feel that extra bit of weight around corners, of course. The plug-in hybrid is 1,700 kilograms, which is about 250 kilograms heavier than the normal A-Class. No prizes for guessing where that extra weight comes from. Batteries. They come from the batteries. Because of all the batteries and all the hybrid bits, you do lose 60 litres from the boot, but... Look, I've got a work bag in here. I've got my Ronin box. I've got all my camera gear. I've got a tripod. I've got a small suitcase and a rucksack, charge cable, and it fits absolutely fine. And if there's even still space for my key. Once we get to our destination, I'm going to launch the BP Charge Master app and try and locate a charge point. So the idea of this is to drive from Hertfordshire to Richmond. So everything was going to plan. The idea was that we would drive all the way to Richmond on a full charge, find somewhere to charge the car, have a day out and drive all the way back to Hertfordshire on another charge, thus not using fuel. Right, so when you get to a petrol station, there's going to be a bit of a panic because on the right side of the car, you've got your charge point and on the left side of the car, you've got your uh, petrol pump. And if you drive into a petrol station to top up the electric, like we see over there, or top up your fuel, no need to panic. The little screen here tells you exactly which pump is on which side. So on the right side, there's a little arrow pointing to the right, telling me that that's where I charge and the petrol pump is pointing to the left, letting me know that that's where I top up my fuel from. Little things. If you feel that you're a little bit on the fence about whether to go plug-in hybrid or fully electric or just stick to the combustion engine, there is an app you can download called EQ Ready. Now this app, you can allow it to track your journey, uh, your location, um, and it will just kind of follow you on a typical week. And it will recommend what sort of technology, what sort of car would best suit your needs. So go ahead, check it out, and just find out if a plug-in hybrid or a fully electric vehicle would suit your needs. If I had to sum this car up, I would probably say it's the best of both worlds, quite literally. Because if you live anywhere in and around London, you know, you're gonna get probably sort of 35, well, 30 to 40 mile range in the real world, which is basically what it looks like I'm going to be getting today. You know, that'll get that'll cover a fair bit of ground in London. But thanks to some of the onboard technology as well, there are different driving modes. So ever since I got into the car today, it's purely been running on electric. But if you want to use combustion engine and reserve your battery till you get in and around London, you can do that. If you want to drive it on petrol during the motorway part of your journey you can do that and then switch the electric if you run out of battery you can flip to the engine if you run out of fuel you can run electric so it quite literally is the best of both worlds right we've now almost reached our destination so i'm going to pull over launch the bp charge master app and find a charge point and it was uh, about this point things took a bad turn like I said before, the car was faultless, did exactly what it said on the tin, and not because it's a Mercedes, there are many hybrid and electric car brands that do exactly as they're designed to. This technology has been around long enough for them to be quite good as well. Our first problem was finding a charge point. There wasn't one there. 
It wasn't, was it? On that, I thought it was going to be on that side bit. This presented a different kind of problem. All that driving around meant that I'd run out of battery power. So, I may need to deploy the old combustion engine. Right, I have officially hit 2% battery capacity and it's saying I've got a range of zero miles. So I'm just coasting through town, trying to get to this charge point. Right, I think I found it. I'm still running on electric. This was the other issue. There were too many types of machines, memberships, subscriptions and systems, payment methods. It really wasn't as simple as I expected it to be. Four. Four attempts at trying to find the charge point. Um, it was like four different suppliers, four different brands. I, I got fed up. After driving back to Hertfordshire on fuel, I went to Milton Keynes, one of the richest areas for charging stations. There are three different cables here, which is fine. It's just one, two, and three. I don't have the super fast charger, so mine's this one here. So, just go around to connect yourself. Point, register for, register for Polar membership at chargemasterplc.com or download Polar Instant App on App Store. Okay. I, uh, I like an app, so I'll just download the app. At this point, I caved and decided to register with one of the suppliers. One star out of nine, 99 views, so promising. <clears throat> I've just had a look at the BP Charge Master, which I thought they were all together. It says on there, charge point ID 22015. There is no numbers on here. 22014, oh, hang on. 22014, go. Once the registration was completed, I found the unit number in the smallest possible text on a tiny little sticker. I just had the simple task of choosing which cable or socket I needed. But then... Start charge. The app crashed. So, we tried again. Charge master, here we go. In access to Polar Network, right? So, Polar. Alright, we are... Here. Two, two, zero, one, four, go. I assume it's socket free. It's not CCS or Chadimo. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Start charge. I give up, I honestly do. Like, I'm quite technologically apt. I understand things, but the next person may not, and I'm really struggling to get this work. I, I just want to charge the car, and it's uh, proving to be quite difficult. Now what? I was determined, so we downloaded the Polar Instant app, loaded it with credit using my credit card, and, well, it didn't disappoint. We were met with a sorry something went wrong message. So I've paid for it. I've set up a subscription. The BP Charge Master app crashed. This one. All the way up to this point, it looked like it was going to work, but then did that. But success was just around the corner, and it only took five attempts. In conclusion then, the people of Britain are open to the idea of hybrid and electric vehicles. The cars, they're more than capable of delivering on their message. The infrastructure, however, I'm not sure if we're quite there yet. Don't get me wrong, it's not terrible, it's far from it. But I just feel they need to be a bit more streamlined and straightforward and simple to use. The expectation was that I could just drive to somewhere that I hadn't been before, plug my car up and within a few minutes I could charge it. 
but the reality was not so simple. At first when it didn't work, we tried another, and then we tried another, and then I thought maybe the problem was with me, but no. Five attempts it took to finally get this car on charge. I hope you found this video useful, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.